my fellow comic book collectors, it's Alan, the Comic Collector Geek, and this is the Sunday show where I look at the hottest Golden Age comics of the week. And just before I do this show, <laughs> I want to say a quick thank you for all the people that voted for this channel. Um, we won Best Spec, and we also won for Best Unboxing. So I, I say we because I appreciate you guys for voting for me and for watching the show. <laughs> so... So thanks for that. Um, now let's get into it. Uh, this one was a very interesting um, collection of books that came up on eBay. Uh, there was an auction where uh, somebody basically brought a whole bunch of Canadian edition uh, comics to, to auction. And there was Canadian whites, there was Canadian editions, and it was a pretty, pretty fascinating collection because... These are books you just don't see that often. They have very, very low census counts. And I'll get into it. There's some other books as well, but there was a lot of Canadian <laughs> books on this list. It's a bit of a Canadian takeover. So with that in mind, let's get into it. The first book is not a Canadian edition, but it is Jungle Comics number 88. And this is from Fiction House 1949, or 47, actually. Uh, it's a great underwater cover with uh, Good Girl. I'm not sure who did the cover, but it's it is a great fiction house uh, uh, artist. <laughs> I, I, it could be like Joe Doolin or one of those ones uh, typically would do their good girl covers. Um, I really like Jungle Comics for the fact that it's a mixture of like like sort of Jungle Girls <laughs> and and Jungle Adventure comics. A lot of bondage covers. This one is just a really cool underwater one. Um, this was a 6.5 that sold, and it sold actually on my comic shop, and um, ding, <laughs> ding, uh, for $180. Uh, the previous record for this book actually was set back in June, uh, January of, 19, uh, of 2021 for $407. Uh, so you're thinking, well, this was a buy it now. Um, but the interesting thing about this book was uh, somebody had picked it up in June of this year for $120. So I think what happened was uh, they, they got a steal on it <laughs> in June and they, they actually just resold it. And, th you know, they, they did a quick flip, you know, still at half the price of the, the previous big sale in uh, 2021. So this was a bit of a steal still. I mean, they they made an extra 50% on it, but uh, it was definitely a steal compared to what it had been selling for in the past. Typically, um, when you get these uh, Fiction House books in those higher grades, they go for like a few, couple hundred dollars, a few hundred dollars. Um, I think somebody probably did overpay back in... Um, 2021 for this book generally I, I would see these like six five grade ones generally go for about two to three hundred so I think somebody overpaid but still to get it for 180 that's actually a steal so congrats to whoever bought that one um number nine on the list is the unseen number 15 this is from standard comics 1954 uh it's a it's a classic barber shop cover <laughs> where you got the guy in the chair and you got the barber. He's about to get his, you know, the, the clean shave kind of thing. And the barber looking into the mirror sees us, you know, when you see, look into the mirror, you see the skull, the guy's skull, the barber's skull. It's like a great uh, classic horror cover. Uh, it's actually the last issue of the, of the run. And uh, this was a 5.0 that sold. And it sold for $430. Uh, the previous record for this book was set back in January of 2019 for $425. So it's gone up, <laughs> but not much. It's basically confirming that price. Uh, so it went up $5. Um, there are 41 of these on the census, and 39 of them are universal blue labels. Number eight on the, on the list is Dime Comics number 24. This is from Bell Features, which is a Canadian publisher. It was one of the few Canadian publishers during the, the, the prohibition between Canada and the United States where Canadians uh, try to protect their comic book publishers by having a trade embargo so no American comics come into Canada. 
So out of that, uh, Bell Features was one of the companies that was formed to produce comics in Canada since there was no other uh, comics appearing. So um, this one uh, is from 1945, sort of at the end of the war. Uh, this was it features uh, the artwork of Adrian Dingle. He's kind of a very noted Canadian artist and creator because he's the one that created Nirvana, the Northern Lights. And he was very uh, uh, prolific in terms of his activity with the Canadian comic industry. Um, and this is a Canadian white. So a very cool book. Um, this was a 5.5 that sold, which if you know the Canadian whites, <laughs> that's an extremely high grade. Um, you never see the Canadian whites in that high grade because the, the paper that they used is like toilet paper. It's super thin, barely stays, like these books fell apart just really, really often. So to see a 5.5 five is a really high grade. Uh, this one sold for $556. Now, as I said, these books you don't see that often. Um, there was no previous sales for this book. Um, so really they could go for whatever because there's nothing to compare it to. Now, typically, um, there's other books in the series that I kind of looked at to see kind of typically where do these books go, how much do they normally go for. Um, typically... It's around that five to seven hundred dollar range in this grade. There was a dime sixty, uh, sorry, dime number twenty and a six five that sold uh, back in twenty twenty for around eleven hundred dollars, like it was a ten uh, ten eighty. So, uh, so that kind of gives you the price where a higher grade would be. Um, a six five is an extremely high grade. I think that's the highest on the census for that book. So, um, so a five five would probably be one of the higher grades in the census. So you'd expect a bit of a doubling effect at that <laughs> between the six five and the five five. So this is kind of where this book you would expect it to sell for around that five hundred to six hundred dollar range. Really interesting one. Um, there's only four of these on the census and four universal blue labels. Number seven on the list is another Canadian book. <laughs> this is Startling Comics number 50. Uh, it's the Canadian edition. It's from Better Publishing, uh, 1948. It's an Alex Schomburg cover. And it's a great, good girl, like, uh, Startling Comics, his, Alex Schomburg's run on that is just awesome. Uh, this has got that sort of sci-fi feel with, um, uh, a girl jumping from a spaceship, <laughs> just, you know, typical good girl art kind of cover. Uh, this was a four or five that sold and it sold for $635. Now the previous record, the U S edition, uh, sold for, um, $853 back in March of 2023. Um, and this is what you kind of expect. Um, a lot of the time when you see American editions, they generally go for more than the Canadian editions in the golden age. Um, I've even seen as much as double uh, what the Canadian editions go for. Generally, the Canadian editions don't command as much money. Um, and there's a few reasons for that. So one of the reasons is usually the Canadian editions came out one or two months after Sometimes they came out at the same time, but often they would come out later than the American counterparts. And as a result, um, they're seen almost as a reprint. So generally that kind of will lower the price. Um, but they are much, much rarer. So the U.S. census for this book is um, 71, of which 68 are universal blue labels. The Canadian census <laughs> is only five all universal, but only five of them. So a tenth of the American census. So just a much rarer book, harder to find, but in a way more affordable. So it's interesting thing about the Canadian editions. Um, the cover looks exactly the same too, <laughs> which is interesting. Um, number six on the list is A Vault of Horror, number 17. This is from EC Comics, 1951. Uh, it's a classic Johnny Craig werewolf cover. Uh, just a really cool book. Um, now, this was a 6.5 that sold, and it sold for $900. Now, this is way up. Uh, the previous record for this book was set back in um, 
earlier this year, I think, I think earlier this year, um, for $528. It was the same book. So somebody basically bought it <laughs> and flipped it and got, uh, they put it, buy it now at um, 900 and somebody took it. So uh, they almost doubled their money. Really good sale for them. Uh, there are 82 of these on the census and 75 of them are universal blue labels. Number five on the list is Black Cat Comics number 12. This is from Harvey Publications, 1948. It is a Lee Elias cover. And it's it's an interesting one because it's where Black Cat goes to Black Cat still, but her Western style. So if you look at the one behind me, you can see Black Cat. Uh, she's on a motorbike. Well, later on, they, they try different genres and they have her on a horse. <laughs> and this is one of those ones with, it's a great red cover with her on the horse. And um, this was a 6.5 that sold for $1,200. Now, the previous record for this book was set back in May of 2023 for $1,095. So it's up, you know, about 10% from last year. Pretty good sale. Uh, there's 17 of these on the census, and 16 of them are universal blue labels. Number four on the list is All Flash Comics number 32. This is from DC Comics, 1947. It is from the DC Universe collection, so that's a little bit of a bonus with this book. Uh, it's also a Lee Elias cover, and it features the first appearance of both the Fiddler and his origin, actually. Uh, and uh, Star Sapphire. So, uh, very popular character from Green Lantern. Um, so this is, this was a 4.0 that sold, and it sold for $1,800. Um, there's no sales in this grade, but this is a big, big sale. This is actually a record, not just for the fact that there was no other sales, but there was a 4.5 that sold in January of 2021, for $1,680. So this is up over even the higher 4.5 sale. So very strong sale for the 4.0. Um, and it's a great book. You know, you get two, <laughs> you get two major characters in uh, one book. So um, uh, there's 44 of these on the census and 42 of them are universal blue labels. Number three on the list is Wiz Comics number four. Uh, this is from Fawcett, 1940. Uh, it's the origin of um, Captain America, uh, Captain Marvel, I should say. Captain Marvel retold. And it's also the first appearance of Daniel Doom. Um, now, it's a great monster bondage cover. <laughs> it's like got this weird monster that's got this girl and her its tentacles. Uh, just a really cool cover. Uh, I really like this one, actually. Uh, this was a 3.0 that sold, and it sold for $1,800. Now, that's a massive sale because um, the previous record for this book was set back in uh, December of 20, uh, 2016 for $430. So it's up like four times almost. Uh, actually, almost five times from that prior record. Um, this book just doesn't come up that often. These early Wiz comics are really quite rare, and... Um, you just don't see them that often. Um, and there's a lot of collectors for uh, Captain Marvel. And um, with a small supply <laughs> and lots of collectors, um, it makes them really hard to get. Um, the funny thing is about Wiz and Captain Marvel is they actually had massive print runs. But the early issues are actually extremely rare. Um, you know, once you get into like the like 20s or 30s in terms of issues, it the prices start dropping rapidly in terms of the, the cost. Uh, these early issues are definitely much like harder to find and more expensive as a result. There's 33 of these on the census and 26 of them are universal blue labels. Number two on the list uh, is another Canadian comic, <laughs> Canadian edition. Uh, it is Phantom Lady number 14. This is from Fox Feature, 1947. Uh, it's a Matt Baker, classic Matt Baker headlight cover. And it's a sailing one where she's like sailing <laughs> a sailing a boat. Uh, it's just a classic headlight cover. Um, this one is uh, quite desired. 
and it was a 7.5. It's really high grade for this book. Um, and it sold for $2,175. Now, just to put this in perspective of how much of a steal this is, <laughs> like it sounds like a pretty expensive book, but it's a bit of a steal because the US edition uh, sold in April of 2024 uh, for $4,560. So the Canadian edition basically sold for half, a little bit less than half of what the American edition had sold for. Uh, you know, it's one thing that you almost got to consider, like, buying the Canadian editions because they're much rarer and more affordable. So if you like the cover, get the Canadian edition. It's a, it's a, it's a, in my, my, my opinion, it's a, it's a better deal because it's a much rarer book. Um, I'll give you a understanding of how much rarer it is. There's 58 universal blue labels of the... Uh, American edition and 65 like all together with the restoreds well there's only four of these in the Canadian edition so much rarer like one twelfth of uh, or one fifteenth I should say of the American edition so really really rare book uh, number one on the list is Batman number one uh, this one was interesting. Actually, this was a Batman that I was watching for a while. And I was like, oh, wait, it's gone. <laughs> Somebody bought it. Um, it's from DC Comics 1940. Uh, it's a Bob Kane and Jerry Robinson cover. It's the first appearance of the Joker and the Cat, um, who later becomes Catwoman. Uh, very uh, major key book because this is the, also the first time you get Batman titled comic. So... Uh, Definitely a major book. This was an 8.5 restored copy. And it was extensive professional restoration. And it sold for $68,500. So 68.5K. <laughs> Big sale. Um, now this is actually slightly down from the previous uh, record for this book in this grade. Um, in... April of 2022, it sold for 69000 So it's down about $500 from the previous record. Um, these Batman Restored books have, have been coming up more and more frequently. Um, and as a result, they're kind of losing a little bit of value just because I, a lot of them have been hitting the market late, lately. Um, now, to give you a, a, a difference in price, uh, there was actually a 8.5 Blue Label which you don't see that often, <laughs> really, you don't see it. There was a sale like 10 years ago uh, for a blue label, and it sold for $274,850. So, you know, this is like a third of that, but that was 10 years ago, so you'd probably see it double or maybe even triple from that price now if it, a blue label came up again. Um, so, yeah, so it just shows you how much less the restored copies go for, especially in those higher grades. When you get those higher grades, people are much more risk uh, adverse to the purple label because if you try to remove the restoration, especially when it's extensive professional, uh, generally what ends up happening is there's no way you're going to get close to that 8.5 grade. You're not even get it probably even close to a 3. <laughs> you know, it's going to be much, much less. And at those high grades, there's doublings that happen in terms of value. So um, often people really don't like to give much value to high-grade restored books. But this one, not a bad sale. I mean, the fact that it kind of held its value, for the most part, a little bit down, but held its value. Um, there's 312 of these on the census, and only 148 of them are blue labels. So less than half are blue labels just to give you an understanding of how many actually got restored. So I hope you enjoyed this list. Uh, what did you think of all the Canadian editions? Uh, do you think Canadian editions should be worth less than the American editions or more based on their scarcity? I'd love to hear your opinion on it. Thanks for again for watching and thanks again for voting for me. I really do appreciate it. Bye for now.